Expedite, the pre-workout is, is designed to really help you get through those moments where you feel a little fatigued. Sometimes your body does get a little tired, you know, it gets a little sore. But this kind of stuff picks you right back up. Yeah, it's a good fight, and uh, you know, Loma against Kroger, uh, Zerna Ramirez back in action. We have this Indian star, Vinjenda Singh, who's selling a lot of tickets. He's a real good super middleweight. Uh, so we're very excited with the card. Barboza is going to fight Alvarado on the card. I mean, it's going to be a great night of boxing. Are you excited to try him out here in Los Angeles, a big market? And try see, who? Uh, Lomachenko, and let's see what he's hey, doing. Hey, we, we had Lomachenko in Microsoft, didn't that's we? That's true, that's true. Right? I mean, obviously, his best market is, is in New York, uh, the East Coast, because there's more Ukrainians there. But, you know, Lomo's transcended just being a Ukrainian fighter. I mean, he is uh, uh, a world-class fighter that everybody wants to see. Yeah. I don't think it's no secret that here in, in LA, in Southern California, you pretty much need a headline Mexican fighter to bring a lot of the crowd because of the fan base. With Mikey, let's just say that he's supposed to lose and he loses his, his next fight with a uh, with uh, Spence. Spence. Is there a shot of him coming back down and fighting Loma? Well, that's uh, certainly I can't answer so about good. him going good. back down. You know, sometimes when a fighter picks up muscle and picks up weight, it becomes very difficult to go back down and fight in a lower weight division. But assuming he can do that, yeah, that's a very attractive fight. Garcia against uh, Lomachenko. Bob, congratulations on signing Tyson Fury. Do you have any plans for him so far? Who? Tyson Fury. Yeah, Tyson Fury is going to fight uh, either in May or June in the United States against the top contender. Do you know who he's going to face yet? Excuse me? Do you know who he's going to face yet? No, not until we have uh, offers out, but uh, we're waiting for a signed contract. Are you in negotiations what? with Wilder at all? Well, sure. We're, we're, Wilder apparently is going to do an interim fight as well on the 18th, I think. And then hopefully we can match him up uh, because we tried uh, to sign Wilder, uh, give him a, 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 a tune-up fight, uh, then have him fight uh, 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 Tyson Fury. Uh, but they decided to do the tune-up fight themselves, which is their prerogative. But we're still obviously open and we'll sit down with them uh, to do a match between Fury and Wilder sometime uh, uh, the end of this year. How do you think uh, Wilder Fury, how does it work out? Does it have to happen on ESPN? Is it a, a cross-platform? It, it is a pay-per-view event. Or a pay-per-view event, you can have more than one entity distribute that event. You know, those are problems that within two or three days you can work out. Those aren't major problems. There's an issue of uh, who does the pickup, whose announces are you, but you can solve those problems relatively easily. Those, that's, this is not rocket science. Now, if you don't want to do the event, then you can use those issues to block the event from happening. But these are issues that are easy to solve. So it would have, would it have to be like ESPN, Showtime, pay-per-view together? Something well, like we don't know if Showtime will be involved. We don't know. Until we sit down and see what's what, we, we don't know. I mean, what is everybody bringing to the table? I mean, it's wonderful to have ESPN and Showtime or, or ESPN and Fox uh, doing the distribution. But, hey, who's putting up the money for the damn thing? I mean, you know, that's, you know, if Showtime, Showtime is backing their guy and we're backing our guy, and that's how the money, well, then I'm sure they're, they're entitled to do the distribution. But if ESPN is putting up the money for the whole show, why would you need somebody else to be a distributor? Do you still hold fast that Showtime's on its way out? Do you still feel that way, Bob? I, I, you have to understand 
The world is not about boxing. Showtime's competition is Netflix, just the way HBO's competition is Netflix. And HBO realized they need all the money in their budget that they have to develop ser new series and that they can use uh, as an answer to Netflix and also to please their customer. Showtime is virtually in the same position. So therefore, when I say that I think they will be out of boxing, it's because that is logical, not because they're not good network to show boxing, not because Espinosa is not a, a, a good programmer, nothing to do with that. But the economics are the economics, it's different. That's all I'm saying. My prediction that I think Showtime will be out of boxing is sort of based on the rationale of why HBO dropped boxing and that had nothing to do with the viability of the sport, it had more to do with using their assets for their entertainment. Bob, speaking of economics, can you share a little bit uh, more details on the negotiations you guys held with Gennady Golovkin today is to hold the press conference with the zone to yeah, announce his partnership? Yeah. We, In terms of what he demanded or asked well, for. Well, I don't want to talk about that. That's not right. But, you know, it just, uh, he, I, he met uh, with us and with the ESPN, and uh, it was decided uh, by ESPN, and we, we agreed uh, that what he was asking for uh, didn't fit our program, and therefore we passed. Um, I would imagine that you would consider him a bigger name than Tyson Fury, going with Tyson Fury over Gennady Golovkin. What, what was the deal breaker between those two? Tyson Fury is, in my opinion, the best heavyweight in the world, and he's in his 20s. Golovkin is well into his 30s, and he's not any longer the best middleweight in the world. Who is the best middleweight in the world? Canelo Alvarez, clearly. Bob, you, you mentioned, I think, with Gennady that ESPN didn't like his attitude. Could you elaborate on that? No, I wasn't because that, that's not right. Okay. I didn't mean to say that they didn't uh, uh, go for what he was asking for. Now, he's entitled to ask for anything he wants because he's a free agent, but it didn't fit the ESPN program. Not attitude, because he's a nice guy, cannot. And, and, and about Vasil Lomachenko, Bob, how do you make uh, the, the big fights happen when it seems like there's so many politics getting in the way? Well, you know, the politics can get in the way, but they, we don't have politics. I mean, we're, we're open to anything. You sit down, you talk, and so forth, and you eventually, <coughs> you know, you, you say, well, we're not going to allow this fighter to fight Lomachenko. Okay. But so what, what do we do? We build up a guy like uh, Teofimo Lopez, and he against uh, uh, Loma. If everything works out uh, later this year or the beginning of next year, is the biggest fight by far in the lightweight division. Is, is that so? Because Teofimo sometimes seems skeptical that, you, that Lomachenko would be matched with him. He, I don't know why he's skeptical. I mean, but, you know, I, I, I can't account for any guy's attitude, but uh, Teofimo knows how close we are to him, and uh, we would work uh, uh, very diligently to make that fight when the time comes. There's no reason why he would say, I mean, I don't think he's saying, maybe he is, that Lomo won't fight him because he's afraid of him, but that's stupid. Maybe it's because he kind of feels he's ready now, but obviously you guys... Mm -hmm. Maybe he feels he's ready now, but obviously you guys well, want well, to guide him into this fight, he, not just look, throw him in In there. order for that fight, Teofimo against Loma, to be really a saleable fight, Teofimo has to prove himself a little bit more. So we have him in on April 20th against this Finnish kid who's the European champion, who's uh, rated number two or three by some of these organizations. And that's a test. That's certainly a test for him. And if he comes through on that, and then maybe we put him in uh, with Pedraza later. Pedraza gave Loma hell. And if Loma, I mean, if Yafimo uh, handles uh, Pedraza, 
uh, well, then people will say, hey, he's really competitive with Loma, and then you do the fight. But now to put Tiafimo in, well, who knows if he can, can be competitive with Lomachenko. Bob, Fimo, what? Bob, how special is Tiafimo as a fighter? Because you said I, Floyd, Manny, and Loma, you called it on that. Tiafimo reminds me so much, his attitude and everything, of Roberto Duran. You know, confident, real sharpshooter, great puncher, you know. But again, it's early, you know. Uh, he's a work in progress. I think, and I have, we have really high hopes for him, but, you know, I don't want to put him with Loma unless he's ready, you know, to get, I don't know, to beat Loma, but at least to give him a good fight. Bob, you said it yourself, Pedraza gave um, Lomachenko hell, to quote you. Um, were, were you surprised with that, and two, what does that mean for someone like an individual, Javante Davis, who walked through a Pedraza and then he gives a tough fight to Lomachenko? Javante well, Davis is using the name of Loma to get a little publicity. They know our number. There's no, they have no intention of putting Davis in with Lomachenko. One thing you can say f about Floyd, with all his bravado, is Floyd knows boxing. No, but but he did have a better performance against Pedraza over Lomachenko. There's no doubt about that. Yeah, but that, that was Pedraza was really, really not the Pedraza that there is now. Pedraza at that point was uh, was uh, unhappy with Lou DiBella and he wasn't training well and so I, I don't think that was a fair test. Do you, do you feel for Loma at all though when he wants these fights and for whatever reason he just can't What can't fight? Get, he's fighting, Davis he's and he's fighting the, the top contender ordered by the BA then he's going to fight Comey the IBF champion so what fights isn't he getting? Well, everybody wanted to see Mikey and, and Davis, but you know, uh, things get in the way. Nobody wants to see Davis. Davis wants to see Davis. Davis isn't a, <laughs> even a lightweight. But as far as Mikey is concerned, after Mikey fights Spence, if he can get down to 135, we'd love to do that fight. Mom. Are those competitive fights to you, though? Do you think what? those are 50 50 type fights for Lomachenko? No, they're not. Lom Lomachenko, there is no 50 50 fight for Lomachenko. Lomachenko is a talent that comes rarely. But Mikey is capable of doing a good fight with Lomachenko. Does, he's Lom capable. does Loma cap out at 135? Yes. I mean, he's small. I mean, you know, if, if you ask what his best weight was, it would be a featherweight. So, but you know, and, and all the guys he fights now at 135 are bigger than him. And now to put him in at 140 or 147, I mean, that's not fair. I mean, watch, watch what happens this weekend. I mean, Mikey's a tremendous fighter great boxer and everything, but Spence is a welterweight, and a big welterweight, and Mikey has nothing to hold him off with. You know, Manny, Manny was able to beat bigger guys. At Manny was able to beat bigger guys at one small point in his career. Who did he fight bigger? One guy, Margarito, bigger than, uh, than, than 147. But he never went above 147, except that once with Margarita. Those guys at 47, they were bigger than Cotto and Delahoy. Well, but, but again, he's fighting. Loma is fighting guys at 135, all of whom are bigger than he is. Linares was bigger than he was, Pedraza, but that, but he's fighting at 135. That's the way he's fighting it. Would, would you be shocked if Garcia pulls it off and beats Spence, or, or just? Well, I would be very, very surprised. Listen, I've been around this block. I did a fight when I, in, in 1974 with great fighters. Uh, Jose Napolis was the greatest welterweight that you could find at that time. And he went in against Carlos Manzone, and it wasn't a fight. Because at the end of the day, as the fight went on, you realized that Manzone's strength and uh, the size was too much for Napoli, and he knocked Napoli out. So if Spence, if Spence wins, could we get the well, Crawford fight? Well, if, if so, if Spence winds up winning. Well, we were, we were happy to do. If Crawford gets by Khan, which I hope he will, on April 20th, 
you know, we want to do that fight. So we'll sit down with them and negotiate a fair deal and do that fight, sure. I mean, sure, I mean, this thing is stupid. I, and really, on the other side, you know, when Fox lists the best welterweights in the world and doesn't have Crawford's name on it, I mean, sh give me a break. I mean, the Fox network is not supposed to be Fox News, which you know everything is crap. So is that fight merit? It's, it's big enough now, well, Crawford Spence? If Spence yeah, beats Mike, it's, it's good to absolutely. make Absolutely. March 17, the young prospect, Michael Collin, um, St. Uh, St. Patrick's Day, can you talk to us about his event, his fight, and um, his plans for him in the future? Well, Conlon is coming on, and uh, uh, he, he will head up the card on March 17th uh, from uh, Madison Square Garden. And then, uh, hopefully, uh, when uh, we get Tyson Fury in the ring, maybe Conlon, because they're buddies, uh, will fight uh, on the, uh, the, the co-feature. Did you get a chance to see Sean Porter fight this weekend? But that, I don't want to comment about that. I mean, I have never felt that Sean Porter was anywhere as like an elite welter. I mean, he's a good, de he's a nice kid, decent guy. He didn't win the fight Saturday, but, you know, whatever the, the officials gave him the fight. Uh, but he's not an elite welter. Neither is Ugas an elite welter. The elite welterweights are Terence Crawford and Spence. What are your plans for Sur, though? How quick is going to go for uh, winning his fight in his debut in the 175? Serdo is going to test out 175 April 12th. If he decides that he's comfortable fighting at 175, we have three champions that fight for us in the light heavyweight division. We'll put him in against Votsik or against uh, uh, Kovalov uh, or Bita Beer. And so he'll have his choice. If, on the other hand, he feels that he should stay at 168 uh, as super middleweight, then we'll match him. Big fights. We have uh, with uh, Billy Joe Saunders is, is at 168. There are a couple of other Brits that are big names, 168, and he'll go that way. So I can't, and I've sat, we've talked with him at length. The decision is going to be his, whether he wants to go up to 175 permanently or stay at 168.